Davidson. I'm a lead naturalist here at the Environmental Nature Center. Just a reminder, make sure that you get in your Instagram costume contest submissions using the hashtag 2020 ENC Spring Fair. Also a reminder, go ahead and take a look at our webpage encenter.org where we have a list of all of our sponsors for the Spring Fair. This is a great opportunity to support those restaurants who are supporting us at the Environmental Nature Center. Go out to eat this week, check out their deals. Some of them are even kicking back a um, portion of their proceeds back to the ENC, which is super fantastic. Also a reminder, go ahead and check out our auction. Make sure that you submit um, for our silent auction. Uh, we have lots of really cool prizes. I saw there is a wine packages in Napa and um, tours around the nature center. Those are some pretty great prizes. So check out our website with all of our information about our spring fair. Thanks so much, bye. Welcome to day three of our Spring Fair Craft Crawl. Thank you to everybody who's participated thus far. And here's some examples of some of the leaf butterflies that you made from our last, last video. All right, now we are in day three, so let's continue our story. Flowers are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer. He can't even get near. They're calling a nectar bat to flap over here. Now it's your turn to make our next craft that's all about bats. And make sure that you submit that craft to me at Raquel at ENCenter.org to be featured in our day four of the craft crawl tomorrow. Thank you. Hi, my name is Becca and I'm from Troop 2800. Our theme is pollinators and in this video, I'm going to be making an egg carton bat. Not a lot of people know that bats are also good pollinators. They drink nectar from flowers that bloom at night and carry it from one flower to another. This is what the egg carton bat will look like when we're finished. Maybe a little less derpy though. In this project, you will need an egg carton, black paint, white paint, and scissors, and maybe some parents' help. Take your egg carton and cut out three sections of it. Have your mom and dad help you. But for my egg carton, my dad pre-cut mine. So this is what it should look like. Don't worry if it's a little imperfect. In this part, I'm gonna make my wings look a bit more like wings by cutting the sides. Have your parents help you with this, again. Alright, so now I made the wings look a little bit more like wings. Next step, we're going to paint the entire bat black. You can paint the insides if you want, 
or not, but it looks nicer if you paint the inside, at least just a little. If you're having trouble painting it, you might want to use a sponge like this so it makes it easier to get into the little cracks. Next, you want to let your bat dry. Alright, once your bat's dry, you can go ahead, take a small brush, and use white paint to paint on the face. Paint it however you would like. Ta-da! Thanks again for watching my video on how to make an egg carton bat out of completely recyclable materials. This pandemic has been challenging for all of us, but some members of our community have been thrust into the front lines of this public health crisis. Medical professionals, police officers, firefighters, grocery workers, package deliverers, and other essential workers have made untold sacrifices to get us through this. The ENC wants to shine a light on these heroes and give them something back in return. Please nominate a frontline worker you know to receive their own private two-hour retreat at the Nature Center, where they can enjoy the healing power of nature with their family. Nominate your frontline hero by sending a short 100-word or less description and photo to mark at encenter.org. That's mark, M-A-R-K, at encenter.org. I will announce the winning hero at the Virtual Spring Fair on May 17th. Thank you. that you've learned about or you can create your own pollinator using your imagination and you can tell us all about it where it pollinates from how it pollinates maybe what kind of flowers it pollinates oh. Oh, what can you tell me about that dragonfly. it's a dragonfly yeah. I'm name for it. Another flower. So you're creating your own. What are you making today for your pollinator?
metal for creating a pollinating animal. and pollinate flowers yeah. and protect the earth yeah. and bring us fruits, fruits and, and vegetables. Oh, it can do both? Okay. What makes it fly fast? That's how many flowers does your pollinator have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa. And where do honeybees live? Look at this. And a beehive. Why are pollinators important? What is that? It's a monarch butterfly. Can you say monarch butterfly? Bye-bye! Look at my masterpiece. Hi there, my name is Joyce Malixi and I am the co-founder of Pink Salt Cuisine. We're a plant-based catering company in Southern California and we're really excited to be here with you today for Savor OC benefiting the Environmental Nature Center. Today we'll be making our favorite vegan brownies. They melt in your mouth and they are so delicious and so easy to make. So let's get started. First, you'll want to combine all your wet ingredients. So for this one, we've got a half cup of oil plus three tablespoons. 
one cup of your favorite plant-based milk plus two tablespoons and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And that's it for the wet ingredients. So we'll get this mixed up and then we'll start working on the dry ingredients. All right, that was easy. <laughs> okay, so for the dry ingredients, we've got flour. We have one cup of flour, one cup of cocoa powder, a half cup of brown sugar, and a third of a cup of white sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, a quarter teaspoon plus an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of baking powder. And that's it. So we'll get this whisked up as well. And easy. So now we're just going to combine the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. And get that mixed together. I don't know about you, but I love every kind of brownie. So whether it is a cakey brownie or a fudgy brownie, they're all great in my book. But this one's amazing because it is, it's fudgy and it, it really does melt in your mouth, which I love and everybody loves as well. So that is it for mixing. Now we'll get this into our pan for this recipe, I have an eight by eight baking dish that we're going to be using. And all you want to do is scrape your bowl and get everything into your dish. And if you want to lick the bowl, you can because it doesn't have any eggs in it, so you don't have to worry about getting sick or anything. Now we're just going to move the batter around the pan so that it's even on all sides. That's it. Nice and easy. Now there's a few things that you can do at this point. You can either top it with chocolate chips, which would be fantastic. I like to use pecans because they're my favorite, so I'm just going to top mine with pecans. But like I said, you can use chocolate chips, you can use walnuts, um, Oreo cookies if you wanted to, anything that makes you happy. We fully support all of it. I actually went pretty heavy on the pecans. This was probably about a cup and a half. So however you like to dress yours up, feel free. And then I also like to use flaky sea salt to highlight the sweetness of the brownie. All 
All right, and that's it. So we have our oven heating at 350 degrees. We'll pop this in for about 24 minutes and then we'll be back with the final product. So it's been 24 minutes and the brownies are finally come out of the oven. They've cooled down a bit as well, so now we're ready to get them sliced up. So I like to use a, a fairly large knife for this. And usually when I slice brownies, I go right down the middle first. And then to get even slices, I'll start slicing in each half and then you get 16 perfect slices. And then we'll go the other direction as well. That is it, we're ready to serve these up. Many thanks to our supporting sponsors for this event. Farmers and Merchants Bank, Steve Walsh with Compass, Wesley Williams Harcourts, the Dennerline family, the Flower Child Festival, and Janet Crockman CPA. Thank you also to our Saver OC sponsors, our silent auction sponsors, and our media sponsor, Stu News Newport.